Germany's Russian affairs coordinator is going against the grain in reaching out to both politicians and the business world in a country that has been isolated by the West. Officially, President Putin is a persona non grata. He was conspicuously absent from the Hague summit earlier this week and his foreign minister was not invited to stay. The G8 has been reduced to the G7. In the absence of a political environment that would accommodate the G8, there is no G8, neither as a summit nor a format. Gernot Erler has warned against the decision and is working behind the scenes to keep the lines of communication open, even with the government in Moscow. Naturally, I'm concerned that formats which encouraged communication are now no more. I'm trying to send a different signal, to show that we are still willing to talk and that we want contact. And I can tell you, I did not struggle to fill my schedule here. Some refer to Erler and his ilk as Russia sympathizers. Others cut to the chase, call them wimps and demand a tough stance against Putin. President Obama also says the Russian president should be punished for his audacious annexation of Crimea. The Russian national anthem sounds at every occasion, even in schools across the former Ukrainian peninsula. Russian flags are put up as a mark of Putin's apparent success. Many say the strong military presence is reminiscent of the Cold War. As is the power divide. But the Russian president seems unconcerned. The Russians have managed to strengthen NATO, which is the exact opposite of what they wanted. We are now unexpectedly faced with what feels like a psychological threat from the East and are seeing liberal people in Sweden suddenly saying they haven't done enough for defense and should be thinking about closer relations with NATO. That is the result of Putin's politics. Russia's real power is not men in uniform, but in the gas that flows through these pipes. The German economy benefits from it and is at pains to preserve business ties. The head of Siemens unashamedly met with Vladimir Putin, thereby counterbalancing Germany's foreign policy. You said Siemens and Russia are bound by a 160-year partnership, and this long tradition between our company and Russia also shows that when faced with challenges, it's better to speak to each other than about each other. Now the talk is of sanctions. Europe is threatening to restrict trade with Russia if Putin tries to annex any more of Ukraine. But Moscow could stop gas supplies in response. We're not going to allow ourselves to be blackmailed. There is enough gas and oil on the world market. Major suppliers such as Iran and Iraq are in the process of expanding, and America and Canada will be exporting gas in huge quantities, so I'm not worried. In Moscow, Gernot Erler and others in his circle are going for a non-confrontational approach. They call it change through trade. Yeah. Our energy cooperation with Russia is good. The fact is, it survived the entire Cold War, including the worst crises, whether Cuba or Berlin. Our bilateral relations have always been reliable, and we want things to continue in the same way. Good trade relations have served to protect against crises. The hope is that the current conflict will not prove an exception.